Settlers of Catan Game Rules How you set up Settlers of Catan You take the border pieces and puzzle them together so they form one big um, border with like a space in between them where you can put the Turan hexes. You arrange the 19 Turan hexes randomly on in the border in the place where that the border formed and then you randomly place the number tokens on top of them. The desert does not receive a number token. Um, there's also a special setup for beginners that you can find on the internet but it is hard to explain it per audio so yeah um, it is also not very common to play that way then you have the then you set up the cards so all of the different resources get into the different resource boxes and the dice get into the dice box so it doesn't matter what you put in what box it just matters that at the end it's all separate also the um, development cards they are not separated separated they are all in one box but for example all of the brick resources cards are in one box and all of the wood resource cards are in one box etc setting up the game select uh, shape and take your five settlements, four cities and 15 roads. Place your two roads and your two settlements on the game board. Place your remaining settlements, roads and cities down in front of you or wherever you want to put it. If you are playing a three player game, nobody plays the red like, um, oh yeah, that does not matter. I'm sorry. Um, take your colors building cost cards uh, or shape shapes building cost card just take one building costs card it doesn't really matter which one it is because it's all the same place the special cards longest road and longest army which will both give you two victory points beside the game board and make sure that you um, place them somewhere where you can reach them during the game Sort the resource cards back into five stacks and put them face up next to the game board into the separate card boxes, which I already set. Um, then just shuffle the development cards and also put them in a card box face down. And um, you receive resources for each Turan hex around your starting settlement marked with a white star. Take the appropriate resource cards from their stacks. Uh, oh, yeah, there's no white star. Oh, I'm sorry. So, um, in the beginning, you just get uh, the resource cards which on which your settlements are bordering. So, if you have a settlement that is on the side of a wood saddle, a uh, wood Turan hex, a uh, brick Turan hex, and the desert you get brick and wood one each each player keeps their resource cards hidden in their hand settlements and cities may only be placed at the corners of the Turan hexes never along the edges so they just have to fit into the uh, into the spaces roads may only be placed at the edges of the Turan hexes one road per edge the distance rule means many intersections along roads will remain unoccupied. The distance rule will be in the special rules. Unless you're using the starting setup for exp oh, uh, the oldest player goes first, I'm sorry. Um, so we are using always the starting setup for the experienced players because it's the more common one. Um, and the oldest player goes first and on your turn you can do the following in the order list list. You must roll for resource production and the result applies to all players. You may trade resource cards with other players and or use maritime trade. 
You may build roads, settlements or cities and or buy development cards. You may also play one development card at any time during your turn. After you're done, pass the dice to the player to your left, who then continues the game with step 1. For advanced plays, we recommend combining the second and third steps. You can find more details in the almanac and the combined trade build phase. The turn in detail. Resource production. You begin your turn by rolling both dice. The sum of the dice determines which terrain hexes produce resources. Each player who has a settlement and an intersection that borders a terrain hex marked with the number rolled receives one resource card of the hexes type. For an example, see resource production. If you have two or three settlements bordering that hex, you receive one resource card for each settlement. You receive two resource cards for each city you own that borders that hex. If there are not enough of a given resource in the supply to fulfill everyone's production, then no one receives any of that resource during that turn, unless it only affects one player. Trade. Um, I'm sorry. Afterwards, you may trade freely using either or both type types of trades below to gain needed resource cards. Domestic trade. On your turn, you ta can trade resource cards with any of the other players. You can announce which resources you need and what you are willing to trade for them. The other players can also make their own proposal, propose, proposals and counter offers. Players may only trade with the player whose turn it is. The other players may not trade among, among themselves. Maritum trade. You can also trade with the other players. During your turn, you can always trade at, uh, without the other players. I'm sorry. During your turn, you can always trade at four to one by putting four identical resource cards back in their stack and taking any one resource card of your choice for it. If you have a settlement or city on a harbor, you can trade with the bank more favorably, at either a three to one ratio or in certain har harbors at two to one, trading the resource type shown. The 4 to 1 trade is always possible even if you do not have a settlement on a harbor. Build. Now you can build. Through building you can increase your victory points, expand your road network, improve your resource production and or buy useful development cards. To build you must pay specific combinations of resource cards. See the building cost card. Take the appropriate number of roads, settlements and or cities from your supply and place them on the game board. Keep development cards hidden in your hand. You cannot build more pieces than what is available in your pool. A maximum of 5 settlements, 4 cities and 15 roads. A. Road. Requires brick and lumber. So wood. A new road must always connect to one of your existing roads, settlements or cities. Only one road can be built on any given path. The first player to build a continuous road, not counting forks of at least five road segments, receives the special card Longest Road. If any other player succeeds in building a longer road than the one created by the current owner of the Longest Road card, they immediately take the special card and its two victory points, so the other person loses the victory points. Settlement. Requires brick, lumber, so brick, wood, sheep, and crops. Take special note of the distance rule. You may only build a settlement at an intersection if all three of the adjacent intersections are vac vacant. None are occupied by any settlements or cities, even yours. Each of your settlements must connect to at least one of your own roads. Regardless of whose turn it is, during any production phase, when a Turan Hex produces resources, you receive one resource card for each settlement you have adjacent to that Turan Hex. Each settlement is worth one victory point. So the distance rule was already now. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. So basically what it means is that um, you cannot have a city directly next to a, a settlement directly next to a city or settlement. Um, 
Yeah. City requires three ore and two crops. You may only establish a city by upgrading one of your settlements. When you upgrade a settlement to a city, put the settlement house piece back in your supply and replace it with a city piece. Um, so the settlement is the one that is just so the cities are twice as high as the settlements and they are on a circle bottom piece and uh, the roads are on a square bottom piece cities produce twice as many resources as settlements you acquire two resource cards for an adjacent terrain hex that produces resources each city is worth two victory points and each settlement is worth one victory point which you can also um, find out about on the uh, building costs card. Buying a development card requires ore, sheep and crops. When you buy a development card they draw the top card from the deck. There are three different kinds of these cards. Knight cards, progress cards where there are I think three different kind of progress cards and victory points and each has a different effect and I will have um, a separate video on the different meaning of the cards so it is not as hard to find the meaning of the cards during the game since it is hard to remember the meanings. Um, development cards never go back into the supply and you cannot buy development cards if the supply is empty. Keep your development cards hidden in your hand until you use them so your opponents can't anticipate your play. Special cases. Rolling a 7 and activating the robber. If you roll a 7, no one receives any resources. Instead, every player who has more than 7 resource cards must select half, rounded down, of their resource cards and return them to the bank. Then you must move the robber. Proceed as follows. First, you must move the robber immediately to the number token of any other Turan hex or to the desert hex. Second, then you steal one random resource card from an opponent who has a settlement or a city adjacent to the target Turan hex. The player who is robbed holds the resource cards face down. You then take one card at random. If the target Get hex is adjacent to two or more players' settlements or cities you choose which one you want to steal from. And if the production number for the hex containing the robber is rolled, the owner of adjacent settlements and cities do not receive resources. So the robber blocks the hex and you cannot receive any resources from it. Um, yeah. While the robber is on it, when it is moved to a different Turan hex, that shifts and you can receive resources from that hex again. At any time during your turn, you may play one development card, put it face up on the table. That card, however, may not be a card you bought during the same turn, except for a victory point card as described in the other video because you um, used them in the end. Ending the game. If you have 10 or more victory points during your turn, the game ends and you are the, win the winner. If you reach 10 points when it is not your turn, the game continues until any player, including you, has 10 points on their turn. So I hope you enjoy playing the game. And there were the rules that you basically need to know. If you have any other questions and questions during the game, there will be an almanac video with the more in-depth in-depth rules yeah have fun playing the game